Welcome back. All right, another great topic for you that I know you're gonna love. Ready? I've got the perfect investment for you. Here it is. It is completely liquid. It has a high return, consistently high returns. It is very safe. Um, it's tax-free. All the money you get out of it, take it now, take it later, completely tax-free. And when you're done with it, you can do the same thing uh, for your heirs and give it to them and they can have the same thing. Doesn't that sound fantastic? David, where do I sign up? No such thing. That's the perfect investment and it doesn't exist on the planet. And so if you ever hear or have somebody tell you that they have that for you, run, not walk, put on your sprinting shoes and get out of there. Well, it's easy to be tempted by those kinds of offers or at least to have them catch your attention when we are in a very low interest rate environment coupled with concerns about volatility, uh, increased longevity, people living longer and having longer retirements. You know, retirement is no longer a long vacation. It now can span 30, 40 years for some people. So the game's changed. It, it's very different. Now, can you have low risk, high returns and liquidity? Well, not really from any one investment. You can do that with an overall financial plan. You could do that by combining different investments together, each with their own characteristics. Combine them together to get an overall plan that can offer you those desirable features. Now, once upon a time, back say, oh, I don't know, 1980, you could get that. You could get a high return with relatively low risk and still have some liquidity. I was 12, but I do remember my grandmother having CDs and she explained it all to me uh, at her kitchen table one day. She was earning 14%. Remember those days, 14% on CDs? Of course, interest rates in general were a lot higher. House uh, mortgages were a higher rate of interest, uh, borrowing for a car, all sorts of interest rate based loans were higher, but you also could earn a lot more on your savings than of course you can today. So yeah, you there was a time, but maybe in 1980, but not in 2015. Probably not in 2016 or 17 either. So I don't see that in the immediate future. So back to the point of not being able to get it from one investment, what do you do? You have to combine together different investments to give you that overall desirable combination of things, low risk, liquidity, and high returns or higher potential for returns. So one of the ways you can look at this, because it's very easy to get all this tangled up, I, I like to categorize and organize things and I do that all the time with my own things I think about and kind of file them away in different filing cabinets in my mind. And so what I do when I build plans for people is I look to investments that fit each of these different categories that I have constructed. So I'll share that with you because I think it's helpful to think about it in this way. First, let's look at, since we know we can't get all three, high return, low risk, and liquidity, well, then we've got to settle for the next best thing from an individual investment or investment type, and that is two out of three ain't bad. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we categorize so that we're going to break it up and see which investments can give us our two out of three in each category. So let me walk you through and I think it'll make sense. First, let's look at low risk and liquidity. Okay, so that's a desirable part of your overall plan. You need some of your money, everybody. They never say everybody. No, I'm saying everybody. Everybody needs some low risk liquid money. Now, it's very easy to get. It's very obvious. You can have money in a bank account, money market, savings account, checking account, whatever the banks call it, but basically liquid money that you can go get with no notice. You can go to the bank and say, I need to draw this money out of my account, or you can write a check. Part of that liquidity includes not losing money on the withdrawal. So when I say liquidity, I'm also talking about, not to be overly technical about it, but I'm also referring to marketability. So liquidity without marketability 
doesn't really do the same thing. In other words, if you could sell an investment and it's completely liquid, but you're going to cost you 10% to get it, that's not the same as what I'm talking about. That's still liquid, but it's not marketable without taking a haircut. So we don't want a haircut. Uh, we want to be able to get our money. This particular category, we want to be able to get our money quickly, and we don't want to lose anything by getting it. So low risk and liquid. Cash, money markets, uh, all those things that are very short-term. Maybe a short-term CD, you know, that rolls over every week or every month. You don't lose much if you cash that in. So that's the first category. Everybody needs that. And every financial plan I build, everybody's got that as part of the plan. Okay, so that's, that's category one. Category two, well, before I go to category two, what am I missing from category one? High returns. Okay, so there's always going to be the two things you get and the one you don't. So you get low risk and you get liquidity, but you don't get high return for category one. Category two, we're going to go to liquidity and growth potential, not low risk. So that's the part I'm going to leave out now for category two. Liquid and growth potential, but it could lose, okay? And it's not low risk. Well, what fits that category? Well, here we have the largest category. Thousands of choices, okay? Here's just a few, right? You could do stocks, bonds, mutual funds, load, no load. What else? Exchange traded funds, preferred stocks, pretty much everything that's available on Wall Street. There are so many of these choices that can give you growth potential, not a guarantee, but potential, and it is liquid. Now, again, if you go into a, a mutual fund where if you sell it within the first five years, there's a charge, you've got to bear that as part of that liquidity, but it's still liquid. You could still get your money back, and it won't kill you to get your money back. But you are accepting the reality that all of those choices I just shared with you, all of them have the potential to lose. Simple uh, rule of thumb, especially with stocks and mutual funds. If it can go up 15%, guess what? It can go down by the same amount. And bonds can go down in value. Interest rates go up, bonds go down. Now, our third category is what we call low risk with some growth potential. What am I leaving out? Liquidity. So what fits that category? Well, in higher interest rate environments, there'll be more choices. But today, those choices have really shrunken to include fixed annuities and index annuities, where your money's safe, that's the low risk part, it's backed by the insurance company. And then the second piece is the potential for growth. Depending on the interest rates at the time and how things are working, the particular product, you can have the potential to grow without putting your money at risk. So those are your three primary categories that you can work with. Should you put all your money in any one of those? I don't think so. You pro most people, I find, are served well by combining the three categories. I need liquidity with low risk, I need liquidity with growth potential, and I need low risk with growth, growth potential as well. Now, there's one more thing to keep in mind, and that is to be careful with investments that only can do one of three. And I've got a few examples for you. Uh, REITs, for example, real estate investment trusts or variable annuities, both of those are less liquid, they have growth potential, but they also are not low risk. So they only have one of the three. They've got the growth potential, but they're not as liquid and they have risk. So when you build a plan, put these things together in the right way for you, get help if you need to. And if you do that, that will help you plan stronger.